This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Thursday, August the 13th. I'm Pastor Linda from Bethel Thedford, and it is a gorgeous day out there today, and you know I didn't even check to see what was going to happen today. Been busy all morning so far. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. And then you'll experience God's peace that will pass anything that you could ever understand and His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for being with us today. Lord, we give You all praise, glory, and honor. You are the Creator of all things and through You all things were created. We thank you, Lord, for the continued good weather that you give to us. The air feels so much better. It's, it doesn't seem as heavy when we're trying to breathe. And I'm sure that many people that suffer from headaches are having a good day today because the air pressure doesn't seem <coughs> excuse me, as heavy either. I pray, Lord, that the folks that are on holidays, that you give them traveling mercies that uh, the ones heading to the beaches, that you uh, give them wisdom in all that they do so they continue to social distance. And we pray, Lord, that our leaders are given wise advice in everything that they say and do because this virus is still here and we still need to uh, be cautious. Lord, we lift up the people making decisions for our schools for the children, for the young people, and for the adults that go back to school because uh, many times we forget about the universities and colleges, but uh, they're highly populated as well, and if they're going to be back in the facilities, they need to be safe as well. But especially with the young people, Lord, it's so hard to sort things out for them in school, and then we concern ourselves with are they picking something up and bringing it home in, uh, in the bacterias? Well, I think that happens all the time anyway. I ask that you protect us, Lord. Strengthen our bodies. Strengthen our minds. Strengthen our faith. Help us to be more in your word. Help us to be more in tune to your will. Use us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as you deal with people, every day we have to become more and more considerate. We have to be empathetic to, to what they're going through. Everybody has their own walk. Everybody has their own uh, issues that they're dealing with. And just because there's a smile on their face doesn't mean that they're happy and that all is well. In most cases, that means that the Lord is walking with them and half the time carrying them and they have the joy of the Lord in their heart, but there's still difficulties there. So be considerate at all times, and above all else, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do. He will show the, you the path to take. We have to be in tune with the Lord. We have to uh, be in His Word to do that, and we have to be communicating with Him. The Lambton Shores COVID report, there's absolutely no change all the way through. The confirmed cases is 327. That's zero increase. There's uh, 25 deaths, and that's been um, at that since mid-June. So we haven't lost any more people since mid-June to the COVID-19. The confirmed recoveries is at 293. And the active cases in uh, Sarnia Lambton area is 9. The Ontario report confirmed cases 40,367. And that means the increase is 78. I thank God that our numbers remain below 100 on the uh, daily increases. Um, COVID-19 has not claimed any more lives over the last 24 hours. We're still at 2,787. 
Confirmed cases recovered is 36,689. Uh, there's 43 hospitalized, 20 in ICU, and there's 10 on the ventilators. The active cases across Ontario is 891, so now we're below the 900. Praise God. Next, Our next uh, focus should be getting below 875. So let's work hard to get the numbers down. The Canada report confirmed cases 120,844. That's 423 more than yesterday, and that's that's a good number, really, because the day before it was 681. No, it wasn't. It was 243. The day before that was 681. The uh, deaths to COVID-19 is 9,006. They confirmed uh, cases recovered, 107,148. So when you do your calculations, there's 4,690 active cases across Ontario. Now the, or across Canada, I mean. The uh, U.S. numbers, I wish they were as positive, but they're not. They confirmed cases, 5,360,302. That's 54,345 more than yesterday. And the deaths are up quite a bit too. That's 169,131. Confirmed cases recovered 2,812,603. So the active cases in uh, the U.S., actually it's down 10,000, is uh, 2,378,000. 568. Now I've got some information here from the infra, from the Center of Evidence-Based Medicine and it's on pandemics. One recurring theme of the COVID coverage is the fear or the firm prediction of second or third waves of the disease. The second and third waves are often portrayed as very likely inevitable or probable by modeling studies. Now waves, as in a sea, or in our case the lake, are usually preceded by a trough. If you look at waves out in the water, you can see what that means. The wave comes way up and then of course you've got that trough before it hits. Um, this is a visual analogy and it's hardly ever mentioned nor the appropriateness of forecasting waves in a coronavirus pandemic. History is littered with references to respiratory virus pandemics and serious pandemics. There's uh, outbreaks between 1889 and 1991. Um, there's 10 of them between 1889 and 1991. And the pandemic ends with a current one, the pandemic list. Uh, the salient, known, or most important, features are summarized in this table. So I've copied this table down, and it's got the years, the spread, season of onset, possible origin, and the notes. So 1889 to 92, it was global, and it started in the spring, and it started in Russia. It had two phases, with the second one being more uh, severe than the first one. 1898 to 1901 um, affected Europe, America, and Australia. They don't know where it started, and uh, they're not exactly sure what time of year it, uh, it did uh, start, but it wasn't a severe one. It just says it's mild. Now, 1918 to 1920, that's the one we hear a lot about. That was a global one. It started in the spring which is why they keep referring to it now. And it started uh, either in the U.S. or in China. Both of them were uh, quite severe. It had um, two or more phases, and the, the second phase was the most severe. Uh, 1946 to 1948, it was also a global pandemic or epidemic. And um, the season it started is unknown because it was so widespread. And it started either 
in Australia or in China, and that was a mild uh, pandemic as well. 1957 to 1958 was another global pandemic. It started in the spring, started in China, and it had the first and second phase, and both were uh, very severe. 1968 to 1969 was a global pandemic, and it started in the summer of the year, and it started in China. It was a very slow spread, but it was relatively mild, but many people were affected by it. 1977 to 1978 was global, it started in the spring of the year, and it uh, the originated in China. Now, the seriousness of it is unclear because of the um, influence of other viruses as well. When a pandemic starts in the spring, uh, quite often it goes right through the flu, <coughs> excuse me, the flu season. And then that makes it worse, it compounds it. So it makes it more difficult to uh, track the actual pandemic. Now, 2002 and 2003, those were uh, viruses that affected Southeast Asia and Canada. It started in the autumn uh, and it started in China. Now it had numerous phases. They, they don't have an exact count and they don't even list the severity of it. 2009 and two, to 2010 was a global pandemic. Started in the spring of the year and it originated in Mexico. It was mild, but it did have two phases. That means that um, the first phase, it seemed to bottom out, like it goes into the trough of the wave, and then it came back up again later. Now, the current one that we're in started in 2019, hence it being called COVID-19, and it's still on the go, and it's worldwide. Now, it started in the winter months, because if you remember, it was November, December, that um, it was first reported, um, the first report here in Canada was in January, but uh, it's thought to have started in November in China. And you've got to wonder um, when it actually started here too, because you can probably remember back where numerous people had um, respiratory virus-like uh, symptoms in the late fall, so it's it's hard to know. This is a pandemic that is still on the go. We're still in the first phase, and we don't know if there's going to be a second phase, but we always need to be prepared for it. Now, the table schematically summarizes what is known about the outbreaks. With the exception of SARS, um, COVID-11, and SARS, COVID-2, all of the other outbreaks have been attributed to influenza A. That's, um, that, that's a virus that's been around for years and years and years. And it's by either positive laboratory findings or inferred by antibody profiles constructed or serial, by serological surveys of living survivors. So the more information we get on these uh, viruses, the easier it is to track, and the easier it is to track, the better it is to uh, make plans on how to take care of it, how to protect people. And that is the reason that we're constantly told to um, use proper hand hygiene, keep your hands away from your face, um, and wear a mask if you can. Uh, there's a lot of people can't wear masks. They find it uh, claustrophobic. And usually the claustrophobia is what causes the difficulty in breathing. Sometimes it is the breathing itself, but there are fabrics that are easy to breathe through. And uh, you also need to social distance. Social distancing is the best, as far as I'm concerned. Um, because if you're not feeling well or if you're feeling unsure as to whether you should be out where people are, then you isolate, that you, you stay home. And yes, socially and mentally, that's not the best. 
but uh, it certainly is the safest. Certainly is the safest. So while we're on the downswing of this virus here in uh, Sarnia Lampton, we need to realize this uh, thing, it can just rear its ugly head anytime. We can uh, be free of it for a period of time and then it can start right back up again because it's still out there. And we're coming into flu season as well. So that's going to compound it. So be cautious in everything that you do. Protect yourself and protect other people. Okay, that all being said, our scripture for today is uh, from the um, uh, book of Hebrews. And it's chapter 1 and it's uh, verses 1 to 14. Now the heading of this one is God spoke through his son. And we know who the Son of uh, God is. It's Jesus Christ. He was born to die for each and every one of us, to give us the opportunity to have uh, eternal life with Him, with God. But that's got to be our choice, because you know when God created us, He created us special. We're created differently than all of the other animals. We've been given the right to make a choice. And we can choose what we're going to do. Are we going to choose what is right, what is good? Or are we going to choose what is wrong, what is evil? It's entirely up to us. And we can't make excuses about anything else. We need to make sure that um, we're going to do what's right. And when you look around the world, more and more people are hearing about the Lord. But there are so many people that don't know God, and they're following false religions, pagan religions, religions led by the devil. And we need to um, be ever so cautious. You look at these um, people that are attempting to grab kids, little kids, because child trafficking, human trafficking, is big business. And it's not only the pandemic we've got to be aware of, it's physical safety as well. All right, Hebrews 1, starting at verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets many times and in many different ways. But now in these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son. God has chosen his Son to own all things, and through him he made the world. The Son reflects the glory of God and shows exactly what God is like. He holds everything together with his powerful word. When the Son made people clean from their sins, he sat down at the right side of God, the Great One in heaven. The Son became much greater than the angels, and God gave him a name that is much greater than theirs. This is because God never said to any of the angels, You are my Son. Today I have become your Father. Nor did God say to any angel, I will be his Father, and he will be my Son. And when God brings his firstborn Son into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is what God said about the angels. God makes his angels become like winds. He makes his servants become like flames of fire. But God said this about his son. God, your throne will last forever and ever. You will rule your kingdom with fairness. You love right and hate evil. So God has chosen you from among your friends. He has set you apart with much joy. God also says, Lord, in the beginning you made the earth and your hands made the skies. They will be destroyed, but you will remain. They will wear out like cloths. You will fold them like a coat. And like clothes, you will change them. But you never change. Your life will never end. And God never said to an angel, Sit by me at my right side until I put your enemies under your control. All the angels are spirits who serve God and are sent to help those who receive salvation. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. First Timothy 2, verses 1 to 6, As I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for the kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. 
This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we continue to sing our praises to you, to give you all honor and all glory. It's because of who you are that we do this. You are the creator of all things. You are God, the one true God who sits on the throne. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices that you had made on our behalf. We thank you that we can have a personal relationship with you. We can call you Abba, which means Daddy. We can know at all times that you love each and every one of us. We can count on you for peace in our spirits and joy in our hearts the joy that only comes from you. That doesn't mean happiness all the time. Happiness is from circumstances. The joy is from you. We thank you, Lord, for walking through difficult times with us and sometimes carrying us because we don't have the strength. We thank you for giving us strength, Lord. Give us wisdom during these last days of summer. Help us to walk the path that you set out for us. Help us to make wise decisions, Lord. Help us to be considerate of all other peoples. But especially we ask that you be with each and every one of us. Hold us close. Love us. Use us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 3 says, You are joined together with peace, with peace through the Spirit. Let's make every effort to continue together in this way. Trust God in all that you do. Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong and help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. Remember to pray for everybody. Pray for your church family. Don't forget that we are still a church family. We may not be meeting in the building at the moment, but we are still family. It's like... Um, your biological family. You don't all live together anymore because as you grow up, you go and live your own lives and you quite often move to different uh, cities and sometimes different countries. But you're still family. You still need to pray for each other. That's the same with a church family. That's why the church family is quite often closer than a biological family because we're right there together. So when you're going shopping, when you're going for a walk, when you're doing anything, Try to wear a mask and use hand sanitizer if you can't be washing your hands with soap and water. If you're going to be going into a store, use the wipes or the sanitizer on your way in and do the same on the way out. When you're waiting in line, keep your distance, social distancing. If you're going to the beach, remember social distancing. And the same in the water. You've got your social circle, you've got your family that you can be close to. Anybody else, keep your distance, and that will keep the, uh, the virus down. We not only want it to be down, we want it to be gone, especially before the flu season starts. And carry on the same type of protocol when flu season starts, and that will help prevent the spread of that as well. There's so many things that you have to stop and think about, and trying to do it on your own is almost impossible. So you need to depend on the Lord so that he will direct your path. Treat everyone with love, compassion, and understanding. And if you're having trouble with that, ask God to help you, and he will. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And we're reminded that we cannot do it on our own. We do need the power of God, who is all-powerful. Zechariah 4, 6 says, You will not succeed by your own strength or by your own power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again.